was secure in continuing to invest money in Ireland. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator. I now call uh, Senator uh, Gillian Van Turnout in your five minutes. Thank you, Lush Kirlock, and thank you, uh, Minister, and welcome to the House. Um, as we're about to engage in the forthcoming referendum campaign, I don't think any of us would have picked uh, the current political climate uh, that we're facing, whether we're talking about household charges or water charges or septic tanks. Uh, equally, we've seen the French presidential election and very likely talk of add-ons uh, to the treaty halfway during this campaign. As this debate has gone on in this House in the Shannon, the Dutch Prime Minister has now gone to the Her Majesty uh, Queen Beatrix, the Dutch Queen, uh, to offer his Cabinet's resignation. So all of this is happening uh, in the backdrop, which for me, Minister, makes it even more important that the information campaign is wide-reaching. I very much welcome the website stabilitytreaty.ie, but if we reflect on recent referendums, there really is a need to use a diversity of media, and the information must come from a wide range of trusted sources. And we've learned this, and let's prove we've learned this uh, as we approach this campaign. During our debate here in the Shannon on the Fiscal Stability Treaty, I encourage members to reserve their opinions until we saw the wording of the proposed constitutional amendment. And I did raise concerns uh, during that debate about the Fiscal uh, Stability Treaty, um, but now that I've looked at the bill that has been put before us, uh, I'd like to commend the Government for their drafting of this bill. As I understand it, the proposed wording does not insert austerity into the Constitution, as some worried it might, nor does it bind us to the terms of the treaty at constitutional level. It merely facilitates the treaty's introduction into law, which I agree is the best course of action. However, it seems that the current wording also means that we must treat the Fiscal Stability Treaty and the measures prescribed within it as separate matters within themselves. And yet these matters and these measures actually remain unclear. While the Fiscal Treaty is probably the most successful treaty that we've received from Europe, in ways it is the most nebulous, because we still don't know how will the structural deficit be estimated, nor by whom, in what time frame we should be delivering, and I quote, rapid convergence towards their respective medium-term objective. We don't know the format of the automatic correction mechanism the Government is examining or indeed what aspects of the Constitution create the need for a referendum in the first place. I worry that this lack of auxiliary information is contributing to the divergence of opinion, which are apparent when one looks at the claims made regarding the treaty. On one side, I've heard that a yes vote will bind us to austerity, while on the other side, I've heard that it can't amount to yes to jobs. While both points have been made forcibly and often, I've yet to see any evidence to support either of these positions absolutely. In the absence of empirical verification, these claims amount to nothing more than histrionic and only seem to cloud the issues that are before us as we debate it. Rightly or wrongly, we are bound to austerity, not by Europe, but by our current domestic economic policy. This treaty only serves to formalise the commitments to the course of action we've already adopted. Equally, this treaty, in my opinion, is not about creating jobs, nor will it defend against the inept fiscal policies that originally brought us to the brink of ruin, as some of the media has erroneously claimed. We have a duty as members of this House to challenge these claims. During the boom years, Ireland was more in compliance with the terms of the treaty than Germany. There is nothing within the measures contained in the treaty that would have protected the Irish economy from the financial crisis we find ourselves in, nor is there anything to actually repair the damage that has been done by it. I think my feelings are actually best summed up, surprisingly enough, by the Czech ambassador, His Excellency Thomas Kafka, uh, who noted that the treaty is designed to restore mutual trust and confidence at EU level. And I think that, for me, is what the treaty is about. It's restoring mutual trust and confidence at EU level. As far as I can see it, we're faced with a choice between maintaining the ESM safety net or facing the deficit crisis alone. We have already subscribed to the terms of the treaty. We've already set on our current course. So surely we should capitalise on the only positive opportunity we presented. I have researched. I have deliberated. And I will, and I have decided, to advocate strongly for a yes vote in the forthcoming referendum. Thank you. Senator, uh,